Hello, ladies and gentlemen, this is Professor Sides, and this course is Principles of Microeconomics. We are in Chapter 5, Elasticity and Its Applications. In this segment of the lecture, we're going to talk about the five classifications or the varieties um, of the demand curve. And we need to remember a couple of simple rules. First and foremost, there are five different classifications of elasticity, price elasticity of demand. And what we do know is that um, the price elasticity of demand is closely associated with the slope of the demand curve. And I, I will show you an illustration of that later on in this lecture. And then remember, rule of thumb. If the if we have a price elasticity, if the price elasticity of demand is high, if that number is high, remember the percentage change of uh, quantity demand divided by the percentage change of price equals the price elasticity of demand. If that number is a high number, then you will know that the curve, the demand curve, is flatter, which means that it's more elastic. Um, if for some reason that number is small, then the curve will be steep and um, we'll say that the uh, price elasticity of demand is fairly inelastic. And again, remember it's elastic. If it is considered like a luxury item or non-necessity, it is steeper um, and the number is smaller. If it is inelastic and it's generally, that's generally associated with uh, items of necessity. So let's get to it and look at the five different classifications of the price elasticity of demand. The first one, the first classification is perfectly inelastic demand. Remember, we have a percentage change in quantity divided by a percentage change in price. And if that number is zero, then we know we would say that this the the price elasticity of demand for this particular product is perfectly inelastic and the instance we would get that is um, the price change does not cause a quantity change there's no change in quantity um, but we see a change in price so anything divided by zero um, zero divided by anything or anything divided by zero is zero that means that we have a perfectly inelastic demand um, for this product. That means that they're insensitive to a change, that completely, totally insensitive to a change in um, price. This is a theoretical concept, rarely exists in the real world, although some people would argue the price of gas in the short run would be perfectly inelastic. Um, the reality of it is, if the price change, even a small price change, there's someone that's going to stop driving their car, they're going to switch and go to um, go to public transportation or possibly even carpool. So the rea this is purely, perfectly inelastic demand um, is purely theoretical and rarely exists in the real world. And again, um, if you see the, the number, the calculation, if the number is zero, then we say it's perfectly inelastic. And as you can see, we have a um, steep curve because the curve is actually um, vertical. The second classification is inelastic demand. Um, and this is where quantity moves less than the price. And what you will find is that um, the quantity here, we said that the quantity moves at a pace that is less than the price. And so then what we will find is that um, the number will be less than one. So when you are doing your calculations and you get a point something, you get a decimal point as the price elasticity of demand, that number point whatever is less than one. So we say it's an inelastic demand, which means that the price can change, but we'll see little response in quantity demand and as you can see here our curve is steep it's less steep than perfectly inelastic but it is still steep which means we are less sensitive or less responsive to the change in price and as you can see here the change in price here is considerably more 
than the quantity demanded. And we would see this, especially with um, those items that we perceive to be necessities. The third um, classification of um, elasticity would be unit elasticity. And in this instance, quantity moves with price. So for every change... <laughs> So for every dollar change in price, then we would see a unit change or one unit dollar for uh, quantity, and it would be the same. And as you can see here, the change in quantity is the same as the change in price, which gives us one, which is a unit elastic. And we are moving from a steep demand curve to now it's getting flatter. Okay. Our fourth example or classification of uh, price elasticity of demand is what we call elastic and that is when the quantity moves more than the price so we have a small change in price but then we have a large change in quantity demand and as you can see the demand curve is even flatter than the inelastic demand and basically what we're saying is that the dem um, that you the consumer respond or are sensitive more sensitive to a price change for this item uh, this product or this service and again if your number is greater than one so if we had a um, our change in quantity is greater than the change in the percentage change in quantity is greater than the percentage change in price then your number is going to be larger than one um, remember in our previous lecture we had 1.33 for one particular example and then we had 2.5 for another those numbers are larger than one so we would say that there is an elastic demand for that good or service the fifth the fifth and final example of um, classification of price um, elasticity for demand is what we call perfectly elastic demand and as you can see here our demand curve is, is horizontal and again this is similar to the perfectly inelastic demand it is pure it is more theoretical and rarely exists in the real world um, and basically what you're saying is that no matter what number the change in demand uh, quantity demand no matter what that percentage is the change in price is going to always be zero and so we're talking about infinity in terms of the number. The elasticity is into infinity. And so again, um, this is a theoretical um, classification and not necessarily a real world example. Now, we have a demand curve. You're given a demand curve. And what you will find is along the demand curve, you will find different classifications um, within a single demand curve. Um, remember we said earlier that if the demand curve is steep or flat, that will tell you whether it's elastic or in inelastic or elastic. Now we're going to say if we're given a demand curve, along the demand curve, we move from elastic to inelastic. Um, and what you will find to map this out, what you will find is um, on this particular demand curve, again, it's dependent upon the slope of the curve. And what we find is that the slope of the curve from 30 to $20 is greater than one. So that means that it is elastic, which means that the, um, that the consumer is price sensitive. So if we change prices between 20 and $30, we should expect to see a dramatic change in uh, sensitivity, responsiveness, uh, the amount quant of quantity demanded. And then as we see here between 20 and 10, we see that this is unit elastic or that the response, consumer's response will move with the price. And then um, what we see from 10 to, from free to 10, we see that this is inelastic or respond slightly. So in essence, what we're saying is this, 
when the price is free to ten dollars if you change the price by a small increment you're not going to see much sensitivity much response from the consumer if you move the price from ten to twenty dollars for however much you change the price that's the amount of responsiveness you will get or sensitivity you will find from the consumer once you get past twenty dollars any change between twenty and thirty dollars then the consumer is going to respond dramatically so here we would say that at between free and ten they view it as a necessity between twenty and thirty is viewed as a luxury and so they will respond in kind this concludes this segment of the lecture. I look forward to speaking to you soon. Have a good one.